Hello and welcome to Conversations in Horror. I am your host, Kevin L. Powers. I'm also the Festival Director and Program Director for Something Wicked Film Festival and Events. And welcome to our podcast today. Uh, today, uh, my special guest is Sarah Panazzo. Say hello to everyone, Sarah. Hey, people. Excellent. Uh, and the two of us are going to be doing a very special episode for our Zombie Appreciation Month. We are going to be doing our top 10 favorite zombie movies of all time. Uh, and this should be a lot of fun because there are so many zombie films out there that I have no idea what's going to be on her list and she has no idea what's going to be on my list. So this should be really fun. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that we're trying to keep this or narrow our focus down by not including infectious disease movies such as 28 Days Later or Contracted. Uh, and uh, not including anything that's uh, demon undead, like demons. <laughs> or evil dead. Or record. So we're trying not to have those in here because those would just open up a whole can of worms that we don't want to get to. We are going to get to the nitty gritty zombie films, things that are actually called zombies. Uh, and they can be undead or they can be voodoo zombies because they kind of relate to each other. So uh, without further ado, I would like to first ask uh, Sarah, is there anything you that came like as a runner up? Uh, for your list that didn't that just quite didn't make the cut this time. I had a few. There was a uh, British mini series actually, so it's not quite a movie, but the TV series Dead Set was one of the best documentary style reality TV zombie things I have ever seen. If you can go out of your way to watch it, please do because it is fantastic. Um, another one I completely forgot about is The Dead Don't Die. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, it is so niche. It is such a special, special film. And if you love bizarro way out there movies, that is the one for you. You've got some great casting, some great one-liners. It, it's fun, but you have to like <laughs> specific types of comedy. <laughs> Those are two completely different types of zombie movies. Uh, Dead Set is your your traditional zombie movie, and then the the, the Dead Don't Die is like the complete opposite. Yeah, because the Dead Set you get like the real world zombie edition, where everybody who is making the show is locked in on their campus and trying not to let zombies in and survive. And then the Dead Don't Die is some I don't I don't even know. Like it's like absurdist comedy. Oh but my. It is one of my favorite things to have watched. Okay. You no, know, those are two really good runner up. I don't think my runner ups are going to be nearly as good as yours. I think mine are going to be downright bad compared to your two. Uh, <laughs> the ones on mine that didn't make the list uh, were kind of like White Zombie, the original film from 1932. I absolutely love that movie. It's one of the few um, Bela Lugosi movies I absolutely love. I've seen it a billion times. Uh, and that's one of my favorite traditional zombie films next to I Walk with a Zombie. So I always like to put that on my list. Uh, the other one would be World War Z, only because that's got some fucking fast-ass zombies that I think was amazing and suspenseful. Uh, the, it, it, even though it doesn't follow the book at all, yeah, <laughs> uh, I thought they did a really good job creating its own little story within its world, and I'm, I'm one of those few people that hope and wish they actually make a fucking sequel. They keep rumors about making one but we we've never seen it yet so i always like i you know if you like your fast zombie movies that's that's going to be one that uh you should actually see my last one there's a lot of people are going to hate me for this one but i absolutely love this film and i love the entire franchise so do not think badly of me but i'm a huge fan of the resident evil movies um uh, I love the first movie, I love the third movie, and I love some of the other ones, but I love those zombie films, zombie monster, whatever the hell you want to call them, because they kind of delve away from zombies at some point, having all kinds of monsters. It's just I've never really been a fan of the game and never really played it. I don't have that whole backstory of it doesn't follow the game at all. It's just horrible. I, I don't have any of that. I tend to love these fucking movies because they have Mia Jovovich, Mia Jovovich in it. Uh, and I love to watch her kick ass and take names. I think she's one of the best uh, 
uh, action heroine since uh, Sigourney Weaver or even Angela Bassett. Those two always kicking ass and taking names. And I kind of put her up at that pedestal, even though the, I, the, rest of the evil films are not nearly as good as the aliens or strange days. type. No, of not at all. But I can't judge you for either of those last two. I honestly contemplated putting both of them on my list just <laughs> because of my husband. Uh, World War Z, he absolutely loved. He thought that they should have done it HBO Band of Brothers style because it would have made the most sense. But I think it has arguably one of the best rules of zombie scenes when Brad Pitt watches the guy get bit by the zombie and then he counts the seconds until he transforms. And that is just one of those big moments in the movie that it's like, holy crap, this is fast. Yes, yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but then Resident Evil, I have a new found, newfound love for that. I remember seeing all the movies and being like, I don't get this, but my husband loved them, whatever. <laughs> but he has gone back and replayed every single one of the games recently. And so I like to side seat game and they've got some really interesting stories. Some of the newer games are unbelievable with what they're doing, um, but they're a lot of fun. They're really creepy when they want to be and they're absolutely disgusting. I and that's the one thing I loved about the Resident Evil movies. They kept coming up with more crazy monsters, and uh, I was like, dude, these aren't zombies. But what the hell? It doesn't matter. It's crazy as shit what they're doing. Yeah. So they're enjoyable for me. They really are. I like to make fun of him calling the. Uh, I can't even remember what the real character's name is, but I call him Mr. T and yell a bunch of jokes about Mr. T while we're playing the game because it's just this big hulking guy and it's like Mr. Z or something. Nemesis? Mr. Mr. X. Sorry, my husband's giving me the pointers, but no, it's Mr. X and I could never remember it was Mr. X. So I'd make Mr. T jokes and while he's chasing him around, I'd be screaming, I pity the fool. So, you know, it makes gaming fun. But no, it's... I'm sad that they haven't made better Resident Evil movies. The one that they came out with. Welcome to Raccoon City. That was I think so. It was, but they tried to squish the first two games together, which I kind of appreciated. They just didn't do it well. (laughs) Just stick to the animated movies since they keep plucking out those animated movies or the television shows that they keep plucking out. Uh, We'll get around to another good one eventually. Or just play the video games. They'll or be much just, better. Play. All <laughs> you right. can w- watch them on YouTube. So uh, to get us started with this one, I'm going to let you start off with your number 10 on your list. So my number 10, I was very conflicted about um, just because it's it falls under another category entirely. Um, and so I went with Reanimator. <laughs> so I consider Lovecraft monsters an entirely different thing, but technically they are zombies. He reanimates them. So it was, I just watched that for the first time this year. I thought it was a lot of fun. I love when people make Lovecraft movies really well because um, it's tough to do. Like you don't always succeed. And I had a lot of fun watching it. I thought it was ridiculous and over the top. And it, it's just a fun, fun movie. So uh, uh, this is the first movies already. We're already at the first movie that crosses both of our lists, except uh, Reanimator crosses number five on my list. Uh, that's because I grew up on this movie and I've seen it a billion times. This one and Bride and Reanimator are two of my favorite movies. I've seen them a billion times because, um, oh my God, I can't think of the main guy's name, uh, name main guy's name uh, who stars as... Uh, Oh, I'm going blank on me, people. But uh, the 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 star of the movie, I absolutely love everything he's in. He's he, he's done, he, he brings so much to these two movies, or the entire trilogy, actually. And uh, the first two movies are ones I can always go back to any time and enjoy them every time I watch them. Um, and if you know who, uh, if you know me very well, you'll realize I also have like Reanimator fucking sweaters and jackets and shit too. They glow in the dark even. Uh, <laughs> so that's how much I really enjoy that movie. That's good number 10. Mine's it's on number five of mine. So when we get back to it, I'll have something else to say. <laughs> but on my number 10, uh, you know, this one, this one's a guilty pleasure. This one's a guilty pleasure and not one that it may even pop up on many people's list because uh, it is uh, from 1984, Night of the Comet. 
Uh, I absolutely love this movie uh, where the comic Haley's comic comes by and kind of kills most people and the people who doesn't kill it turns them into undead zombies. And then, of course, there's these two uh, valley girls who are trying to live a new life in a world full with zombies and other things. Uh, I saw this when they originally came out and couldn't stop laughing. So in 84, when this movie came out. I was I would instead of being terrified as a little kid that I was, I think it was maybe 10 years old when this movie came out, maybe even younger. I was laughing my ass off. Uh it's probably one of the reasons why I absolutely love zombie movies. So for number 10, I have Night of the Comet. <laughs> Going with number nine, which I know is also on your list. Newly recent to my list is Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. I <laughs> think it is so much fun it is so campy it's one of the earliest zombie movies that i think were kind of around but like it's oh my gosh it's just a barrel full of laughs it's it's a little slow but you you're waiting for these characters to get killed by zombies or whatever else might happen to them because some of them are just awful but the comedy is there the zombie aspect that like the makeup and effects are so well done um and the writing is just hysterical so uh, that one was on my most underappreciated zombie or most under underappreciated zombie films i didn't put it on my list this time uh because i put it on that list but i'm glad that that movie has changed your life it has <laughs> i will definitely be going back and rewatching it so uh, what, what's funny is that my number nine is one that's actually on your most underappreciated films, uh, which is The Girl with All the Gifts. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny how our films cross over. I thought that movie was absolutely freaking brilliant, and I hadn't seen anything like that, and it re 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 revolutionized the zombie, the zombie genre for me uh, because I had seen so many films that were so much alike in the last 10, 15 years. And this film, which I thank God someone recommended it to me, I was like, holy shit. This was amazing writing, amazing acting, amazingly executed. And I'm like, holy, and it has great clothes in it. What, what more do you need? Right. She was like the one piece of casting I was not expecting in that movie. Um, I mean, I think it works really well that I believe the writer of the novel also wrote the screenplay or co-wrote the screenplay, but I would have loved to see so much more from that entire group of people because it was so beautifully done. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's on my list. <laughs> All right, <laughs> what's next on yours? So number eight for me um, is another children's movie. <laughs> It's called Little Monsters, um, not the one from like the 70s, 80s about the monster under your bed, but it is, I think it was like 2019 on Hulu released with Lupita Nyong'o, and she is a kindergarten teacher who takes her kids on a field trip to a petting zoo, and she's got a couple of parents there, there's a kids TV host who like sings and dances who decides to go there, and it's played by Josh Gad, but then... Somehow, some way, there is a military base down the way that accidentally releases a bunch of zombies. It is very self-aware. They make jokes about, well, are they fast zombies or slow zombies? And they're like, well, they're slow. And they're like, well, well, thank God, but at least we can like save them that way. But the humor that comes from it with like telling the kids like, oh, no, they're just they've all got the flu. We don't want to go near them. Let's you remember how to play tag. Let's play tag with these. You don't want to be touched by them. And just the way that they make themselves escape from zombies with a bunch of children because it's not hard enough as it is uh yeah i have to put this one on my list i've not seen it yet and i really did want to see it when it came out and it, i just kind of forgot about it uh so that one is definitely going to be on my list uh to watch uh where are we at number eight yeah you're number eight number eight number eight for me is dead snow uh that is by far one of the craziest zombie films i've ever seen and thankfully you know it is a foreign film because i don't think that an american director would have the balls to do this movie about <laughs> nazis wanting their gold back and everything going to shit with for a bunch of friends who just want to what do you call it the snowmobile thing you just want to have fun 
<laughs> um, I thought this was a lot crazier than I thought it was going to be. When you see the trailer, like, oh, it's gonna be a little crazy. It's gonna be be gory. Okay, Nazis, zombies. It's been done. Oh my God, this movie was so crazy. And uh, it, it, if I could put a double feature with Dead Snow Two. I would put a double feature with that because that one goes even balls to the walls crazier. These two movies together are nuts, yet they're so inter entertaining and engaging. Like, you can't stop watching how crazy these two movies are. Uh, so on my list, Dead Snow, I hope you all, if you've never seen it before, you check it out. Well, and, like, leading from that, like, just all of the, like, Call of uh, Duty zombie games that you had to play that came out of that. And then we got, uh, what was it? um overlord oh you get kind of from that too i mean it's it's a genius concept i mean if you can't kill real zombies you might as well kill the next best thing which are nazi zombies <laughs> oh my god overlord i forgot yeah that's another great one <laughs> that was so great and i couldn't consider that one zombie either because it's like a serum they inject into human beings so but i was like that's another just great great gross movie yes uh, that's one that i'll have to add to our list to watch eventually <laughs> all right so for you what's your number seven i think we're at number seven now yes my number seven I, I hated myself for putting this on the list because it is like one of the most well-known zombie movies ever and i thought it was hilarious at the time but then they came out with the sequel and it just kind of exploded and I kind of got over it. But Zombieland, when it first came out, was so original and it was so much fun. I mean, you get the rules of zombies, which is really fun. You get the whole scene of the the minivan being chased by children in princess costumes. And it's so interesting seeing a group of people trying to come together and equally screw each other over at the same time. And the Bill Murray cameo is just like, come on, how can you, how can you not like seeing Bill Murray like that? I'm going to save my commentary for Zombieland for a future episode. Uh, <laughs> I can only preface this. I did not care for Zombieland. I liked the first 20 minutes and thought it was the most brilliant fucking opening to any movie ever. And yeah. to me, it fell apart completely. Um, but I'll save that for another episode. I will say that the opening 20 minutes of that film is absolutely it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. And that's why I was saying, like, at the time it came out, I thought it was really fantastic. But, like, over time now, it's slowly degraded in my mind. But I still think it's, like, one of the best zombie movies. Because, I mean, like, you get the whole ending at the fair where you've got the giant killer clowns with the shoes and the hammer. And you're like, okay. I've seen people have watched Twisted Metal or played Twisted Metal way too much. And now we've got this and some of it's so creative with what they do. I just, I had to, I had to. Uh, and you know what? I, I can guarantee you there are a lot of people uh, out there who really, 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 really love Zombieland. I do say that that is uh, a brilliantly casted film. I think everyone did a great Absolutely. Job. I will save my uh, my reservations for the, the last two thirds of that movie for another podcast. <laughs> but that is uh, a good way to do a zombie comedy because, like I said, the first 20 minutes are absolutely brilliant. Um, but for my number seven, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who who, who who probably love this movie. And this is one I've seen a lot of times, so I'm, I always put this one on my list. It's Shaun of the Dead. Um, I thought that is probably by far one of the greatest zombie comedies ever made. I think it's flawless. I think they did a brilliant job with it. Uh, I think everything about that movie is just absolutely beautiful to watch and laugh at and enjoy, whether you're by yourself or when you're with your friends. That's a friends movie. It's always great to watch that movie with a group of your friends. So, I have to save my comments for that movie for a little later into this list kevin okay <laughs> <laughs> i was not expecting it you to have it so low in your list <laughs> i still got a lot of movies though to get to so yeah <laughs> but uh okay so i think we're on number six yep we're at number six so number six is a head-to-head -head for me oh. because there is an original and a remake both that I think have really been well done. Um, Dawn of the Dead. 
The original, I think, is so interesting, so creative, so much fun, and so just disgusting. I mean, it's it's got some great bits with a minimal cast for the most part of, like, main characters. But then you've got the remake from Snyder, which, like, I know a lot of people didn't like, but it's also so much fun and i think it's so well done the characters are outrageous you get that larger cast um you get all the ridiculousness i mean just being the fact that you're stuck inside a mall during the zombie apocalypse like you think it would make sense but there's so many difficult things you have to deal with and so many easy things you wouldn't have had to think of so everyone listening, so this will be the second movie that I love the beginning for, but do not like most of the rest of the movie too. I think Dawn of the Dead, the remake, has an absolutely brilliant opening. I think it is absolutely brilliant as one of the best uh, openings for a movie. I think the rest of it falls apart. <laughs> but what I do love is it, it introduced fast moving zombies. I think yes. once that movie came out, the whole genre changed. Um, I think what Snyder did in that movie, directing wise, was absolutely brilliant. It looks great. It is suspenseful. It is everything that you want in a modern day zombie film. My problems come a little bit later in the movie, and I guess we're gonna have to discuss that in the future episode so I can tell everybody why that's not on my list. But I will. That 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 was my preface for all this because I think the George Romero version is flawless. Uh, if you watch. His version, not the international version. And I know that there's like three different versions out to you. If you watch the original two, two and a half hour version, I think it is, because I lose track of the times on these, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, I wish that the Goblin score had been put in there with Romero's version. I think it would be an even better movie. But the Goblin's version is only on the international release, which is much shorter and not nearly as good. <laughs> and I mean, the great... The greatest part, in my opinion, about the original is the Tom Savini appearance. I mean, it's just, I love Tom Savini. I love that he does all this stuff with Romero. And him as a motorcycle rider <laughs> is just fantastic. It goes straight back to, uh, oh, man, what was the uh, other one they did where he's the biker? Oh, Night Riders. No, I'm not even thinking about that one. I'm thinking from dusk till dawn. Oh yeah, that one too. <laughs> but I I love Tom Savini and all of his greatness and the zombie stuff in this is just so mm -hmm. unbelievably well done. I mean, I know I've seen like all the Savini stuff I possibly can and he really is an artist when it comes to the special effects stuff he does. He is. He, he's, a, he's an artist and I got to meet him one year at Dawn of the Dead uh, here in Atlanta uh, and uh, Days of the Dead. I said Dawn of the Dead. That's the movie. Days of the Dead convention I met him at, uh, and he was an absolutely joy to be around. So I think the guy's great, and uh, you know, I love what he did, and what he does. He's a he's a great artist. So, uh, Which one are we on? Oh, we're on my number six. Oh, I was about to skip. We're on my number six. Now, this one, I, 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 this one, I don't know if this is a guilty pleasure or not, uh, but I know that it does not really follow the source material nearly as well as the crappy remake. But Cemetery Man is one of my favorite films. Uh, uh, and Rupert Everett is freaking brilliant in this movie. And I think that uh, he, I wish that he would have done more films like this, but Cemetery Man is like a brilliant version of Dylan Dog, but it doesn't really follow the Dylan Dog comic book. <laughs> if you've seen the, the really bad remake, Dylan Dog, Day of Night or something, whatever it is, called with um, Brandon Ruth. That follows a comic book more, but it's not nearly as good at all. Um, Cemetery Man, though, that is an absolutely brilliant movie. Uh, the idea behind the guy, two guys just babysitting a, a cemetery and making sure that the dead stay dead in their graves is absolutely a fantastic concept. Uh, <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there who may have never seen or even heard of this movie, uh, so I'm hoping that uh, we can shed a little bit more light on this movie for a lot of people out there who may have only known the character Dylan Dog from the Brandon Ruth movie. Yeah, that's the only one I knew. So I'm glad to know that there's like a better version of it now. Oh, yeah. If you've never seen Cemetery Man, you should definitely put that on your list. <laughs> uh, number six. 
number five. So number five is another one that I had trouble putting on the list because it's not outright a zombie movie, but the choices made in this movie lead it to be a zombie movie. And that is because it is Cabin in the Woods, which oh. is <laughs> all time one of my favorite horror movies. And I hate that more people didn't understand it mm. and hated that it played to stereotypes. And I was like, that's the whole point. It's making fun of this. But because of the decisions made in the basement, we were robbed of the merman and <laughs> the man eating ballerina and all the other creative options they came up with. And we got stuck with the zombie family who was cursed. But I think it is, I could do an entire episode on this movie. It is one of my favorites. I love what Joss Whedon put into that film. The casting was great. The monsters are great. The fact that you've got two completely different stories going on at the same time is brilliant. Um, and the fact that the myth making they created is completely false and they feed it into their own demise. It's just so brilliantly done. I love this movie. I will agree with you. Uh, I almost put this one on my list as well, uh, but because I kept thinking that the zombie aspects were only a part of the overall film, I kept, mm, should I, mm, should I, mm, and then I decided ultimately not to. I think Cabin in the Woods is one of the few uh, modern films that actually is also a flawless one too, um, because I think it was, it, it played with stereotypes. It was a modern day feeling or feel with uh, with the whole genre and it took it and twisted it like Josh Whedon would normally twist everything he does. I think he's a brilliant writer and uh, conceptualist um, and it it changes your uh, your into what was it not your anticipation it changes your aspects of what you're watching. You're thinking you're watching this typical kind of zombie film and it turns the whole genre on its head i agree with you i wish more people had appreciated it when it came out uh but uh it's one of those films where i think the marketing sucked on it i think though one of the reasons why i saw it is because it was josh whedon's name was attached to it absolutely and i mean it's it's kind of like with bodies 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 where it's it's too smart for the average film goer like a lot of people will just go in they're like i'm going to see a horror movie they don't want to think they want to see people get murdered and so they fall into the whole thing of well this is just playing into the same stereotypes it's nothing new whereas the people who actually like fully pay attention to every aspect of it and go back and rethink and rewatch because it's not just a gore fest for them um they want that deep introspection and that's what they got with that movie there's so much explanation for why the characters do what they do Whereas to like, they're even drugging the hair dye that they put in the, the chick's hair. And it's like, okay, they are completely changing all of these like super smart, like Harvard students into <laughs> stereotypes. And it just works so well. It does. It does. I will agree with you on that one. <laughs> so I'm glad you put it on your list. Yes. Uh, uh, my, I, We've already mentioned my number five, which was Reanimator. Um I can't say more about this movie. I just want more people to watch it. And that's it's a it's a cult movie now. So Stuart Gordon uh, created one of his biggest cult movies with Reanimator, and of course it's gone on to become a very infamous cult movie. And I there's nothing more for me to say about that movie. It's brilliant. If you haven't seen it, go out and watch it. We'll move on to the next one because we've already talked about it enough, and we did a, our own episode that's dedicated to it. So make sure to watch that episode as well. Okay, so number four for me uh, is a little more recent. It is One Cut of the Dead, where you get three great movies in the realm of one movie. Um, you start off with a zombie documentary being made uh, where they're going to like a haunted place and all of a sudden zombies attack while they're making a zombie movie. And <laughs> it's just chaos and gore and it's fantastic. And then you get to part two and you learn more about why the movie was getting made it's a whole prequel of things and then the third part is just completely eye-opening i really want to see what else this director and crew are going to do because it was so creative it was so fresh and it was so smart yeah i'm glad you mentioned that because uh i know that was on your list of most underappreciated as well but i think that that's one of the few modern day zombie films that actually not only uh, turns the zombie uh, film on its head, but also the found footage slash realistic type documentary. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's some stuff in this movie with the cinematography that you would think 
you should not be seeing in a found footage style movie, and yet they accomplish it flawlessly. Uh, a lot of people get killed, and there's blood everywhere, and it just seems to be coming out of everywhere. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and the budget for it was so small, but they've made so much money. I think it was over thirty million on a budget of like fifty thousand or something like that, but almost entirely spread by word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it oh, is. I- it's a great movie. It is a lot of fun. Uh, I believe you'll have to deal with subtitles if you're against those types of movies, but it is a fantastic film to watch. Yes, and you can cap, you can see it on Shudder. I know that's where I saw it. Yes. I saw it on Sh- Shudder. Uh, no one had told me about this movie at all. I just happened to see it on Shudder, and I like bored one day, click, and I was like, "Holy shit, this movie's great!" Yeah, it is definitely one of those that you have to go back and you have to show your friends because it is such a joy. Uh, so speaking of foreign films, my next film is a foreign film as well. At number four for me is Train to Busan, uh, which I think is absolutely another great movie. I try and introduce, if I'm going to introduce a film to a foreign film, usually right now I've been telling everyone to watch Train to Busan. Um, I'm also somewhat a fan of Peninsula. It's it's kind of spinoff slash sequel. Uh, but Train to Busan, I think, is brilliant in terms of its storytelling and its execution with a zombie film uh, and the father who's not exactly the best father uh, figure. But through this this whole elaborate movie of of circumstances, he becomes to be a, a really good father and you know set, makes sacrifices that a normal person wouldn't have to make if there wasn't a zombie apocalypse going on. <laughs> So Train to Busan is actually my number two on this list. (laughs) I adore this movie. It is so emotional and it is so heartbreaking. You see so many different relationships that don't have anything to do with each other until they get on this train. You see relationships change and grow and weaken. And it is a beautifully done movie. Like by the end of it, every time I am just sobbing. And I cannot listen to the song that the little girl sings ever and not just openly weep. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you wouldn't expect that from a zombie film at all. You really wouldn't. There, It's such a beautifully done movie. It's like The Girl with All the Gifts. It's an emotionally driven movie that you didn't expect with a zombie background. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So if you haven't seen Train to Busan, you make sure to check it out. Uh, and if you're into the fun part of those type of movies watch peninsula or the animated one which is soul station i don't know have, did you see soul station i think i did at one point but i can't remember anything about it and i <laughs> haven't seen peninsula yet well, that's hard i part. know it's been it's been on my list for a while but it's an ever-growing list unfortunately i know our lists are always <laughs> ever growing all right uh where are we at oh uh where are, are you your is your number four now or my uh i think we're down to our number threes so okay. go ahead with your number three okay my number three is dead alive um the strange story is uh the first time i saw this i hated it i didn't i didn't get the humor in it it wasn't until years later that i rewatched it after i originally came out and realized just how fucking funny this movie is I cannot stop laughing at this movie, and I rewatched it for a podcast, and I still realized just how funny this damn movie was. Uh, so when we were doing our list, I had to put it there at the top because it's one of those films that I just cannot stop enjoying, no matter how many times I've seen it. Uh, that's how I feel about Dead Alive slash Brain Dead, as it's more commonly known. Uh, Peter Jackson's early film. I I think I think any movie about a boy and his zombie mother. Uh, can't go wrong really yeah i'm ashamed that i still have not seen this movie it has been on my list for the longest time because i loved peter jackson's lord of the rings um and i just never got around to it and so it's it's been sitting on my list now especially with all this going on i'm like okay it's zombie month i've got to watch it you definitely need to check that one out just like i need to check out little monsters so uh my number three is a super throwback to the 90s for all of you 90s kids out there, but Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. It is one of the best entry zombie things you could ever watch. Um, it, it Scooby-Doo was one of my all-time favorites growing up, and the fact that this was the first movie that actually had real monsters was humongous. I mean, the soundtrack is still regularly played inside my house. 
um, and we go back and watch it occasionally. I mean, it's it's so much fun. It's your typical Scooby Doo episode, except it's extra creepy. Um, and especially for your kids who are like trying to get into zombie things, I think it's an amazing entryway movie to get into it. Okay, I, I we we've, we've discussed the, this before, but I also like to tell everybody that I have the same feeling about this. But I never thought about putting any animated movies on my list, so uh, I like to agree with her on the fact that Scooby Doo on Zombie Island is actually a really brilliant movie. Whether you're a Scooby Doo fan or not, I think you can get a lot from just watching this movie alone. What uh, whether you like zombie movies or not i think it's a great movie monster movie with uh scooby-doo so there you go that's that's my two cents um at number two i go with one that i like which morally it's it just it just makes me smile uh and i know a lot of people out there have never seen it and never want to see it because of how gory it is and that's flesh eating zombies or Lucio Fulce's Zombie 2, which is all, how what it's also known as, because it was originally designed as a sequel to George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, which was called Zombie in Italy. So this was Zombie 2, but also known as Flesh Eating Zombie. So I love this movie because it's so gory, and it's one of the films that introduced me to Italian cinema. Uh, I think this was before I watched any of um, Dario Argento's movies, I had seen this film. Um, Dario Argento is one of my favorites of all time. Z Lucio Fulce comes in second, but this movie was the first one I had ever seen, and I realized that the Italians have a different ideal and interpretation of what a zombie film is. And this movie, zombies just eat everything and they kill everything, and you know you had the eye splintering stuff in there, and you know people are getting their body parts ripped out. There's even a freaking shark and zombie fight. I mean, how can you not go wrong with this movie? This movie is entertaining from beginning to end. I love this movie. I I, I wish more people would watch it. Whether it's who who knows what title you'll find it under, but I hope you watch it and just avoid Zombie Three, Four, and Five. Just watch this one. That's all, all, all you have to do. <laughs> what about you, Bonazzo? So my number two was originally, or already mentioned, so Train to Busan. Like I said, phenomenal film. It, oh, it's so well done. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So I guess we've gotten our, to our number one. Uh, our My all-time favorite zombie film. Unfortunate, or fortunate, fortunate for me, and uh, maybe unfortunate for you, I had to do all three of them because it's kind of like a series for me. And so I kind of like to watch all three of them at the same time, a lot of times. Uh, we've mentioned one beforehand, but uh, I'm an all-time favorite uh, zombie film would be George e. Romero's original Night of the Living Dead, but also his Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. I think that's one of the best zombie trilogies or trilo horror trilogies in general that has ever been created. With each of the films, they are completely different from one another, yet they still ha have like a progression of uh, Romero's idea of what a zombie was. And he didn't even call them zombies back then. They were just called ghouls back then. Um, I think the, the nomenclature changed over time, and it, 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 people just started calling them zombies, and then they became zombies. But uh, that being said, the 68 version of Night and Live Dead is absolutely brilliant. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who may have never seen it because it's in black and white. Shame on you people out there. It's in black and white, but it's still a great movie. Do you say that with Casablanca? Casablanca is a brilliant movie. It's in black and white, too. Go out there and watch Night of the Living Dead. Uh, but besides that, you have Dawn of the Dead, which is, like we've mentioned before, uh, a movie that takes place all in a mall. <laughs> and then, of course, you have the very depressing uh, and dystopian Day of the Dead, which is depressing as hell um, and dark. And um, when I first saw it, I hated it, hated it. When I saw that movie, I was too busy thinking that uh, Return of the Living Dead was how zombie movies need to be. They were, you know, they were talking, they were dancing, they were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Day of the Dead was depressing. I remember when it came out, it was depressing. I thought, oh, it's a crappy movie. Over the years, that one has become one of my favorites of the entire trilogy. I understood it more as I get older, so I think you will too. If you haven't given it a second chance, give Day of the Dead a second chance. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's it's hard to have a top zombie list without listing any of the Romero movies 
I mean, <laughs> they're they're so pivotal to the zombie movement. I mean, it's you've got the originals, you've got the remakes, you've got the spin-offs. I mean, there was even one I found where it was a uh like a laugh tracks version called night of the day of the dawn of the sun of the bride of the return of the revenge of the terror of the attack of the evil mutant alien flesh eating hellbound zombified living dead <laughs> are you shitting me oh my god i'm not kidding and basically it's like they just put um they put on night of the living dead and just do laugh tracks with it and it became an entire comedic thing where they would just redo the movies with a new <laughs> A new script. <laughs> but I mean, you've got so much stuff that has spun off of this. So many, I mean, so many things. I mean, he's basically the godfather of zombie movies. And he um, didn't mean to be. That's the crazy thing. I know, but it was so well done. They're not my favorite because I, I don't like the dark and gruesome zombies. It's really depressing. They but, are. Because, yeah, like, if you've noticed with both of our lists, there's a lot of comedy on them. Um, but, yeah, it's... You can't not like Romero. And that's the thing is there, I, I've come across a lot of people who just didn't like them because like you said, they're depressing. They're freaking dark. They are dark. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, and I think this is the younger audiences, the newer generations. Uh, I grew up around the time that um, Day of the Dead came out. Uh, but I also remember watching Return of the Living Dead when it first came out and gravitating more towards the comedy ones back then. As I got older, I kind of understood what Romero was doing beforehand. Like mm -hmm. I, just, I didn't, I the, my first watching of any of these was Day of the Dead. Um, I saw that when it came out with Return of the Living Dead, and then as I got older, I realized Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, all the other ones. Um, like you and a lot of people, I didn't grow, I, I didn't grow up with the originals, and so therefore I grew up with the comedy ones, and I thought those were better. I like talking zombies. I loved Return of the Living Dead too, uh, because of you know the Michael Jackson zombie at the end just getting electrocuted and dancing the moonwalk. That stuff right there was funny to me. I can recite that movie. Like really, of all the zombie movies growing up, I could recite, I could recite Return of the Living Dead too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but you know, as you get older, you kind of your taste change. You understand movies more. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I did some critique and analysis of these movies, and that's how I ended up loving these movies more than some of the other ones. Like I still have Zombie Two on there. There's no redeeming qualities of Zombie Two. That's just a gore fest. Just want zombies <laughs> kill everybody. I love that movie. <laughs> and that's one of the great things about zombie movies is you can get stuff all over the place. They can be dramatic. They can be romance. They can be comedy. I mean, they're all over the place. They're all over the place. So let's go to your number one. My number one you had mentioned earlier oh. um, is Sean. I absolutely love Edgar Wright, and I love what he does. Hot Fuzz is one of my all-time favorite movies. It is one of the best genre mashups I have ever seen to this day, and we regularly watch it in my house. Um, but Shaun of the Dead is so lovingly done. And the little moments that you pick out that are like almost exactly from other movies, you can tell that he is the super nerd who wanted to put every little thing that he appreciated about zombie movies into this movie. Soundtrack is phenomenal. The mm -hmm. gore is phenomenal. The kills are amazing. I mean, there's a whole scene with them throwing records at somebody like throwing stars and hoping that'll kill them. And it doesn't. I mean... It's common sense, but it's so funny. And the whole point of like, well, we'll just do all this stuff, head over to the pub, drink a pint. We're going to be fine. And that's what they do. <laughs> I cannot get over the scene where, uh, what's this, Simon Pegg is walking down the street with a hangover and the zombies everywhere. Oh, and my gosh. I love that scene. It is one of the greatest openings of all time. He opens up the refrigerator, he opens every day, and there's a blood smear he's completely ignoring. Nobody is at the register, so he just throws his change on the counter. I mean, it's it's so brilliant, and the cast is just amazing. Everyone. That whole Every in single person. Every person is great. So I, I can see why you put that as your number one. Uh, if I hadn't have been a film student who studied fucking uh, George Romero films in college, that would probably <laughs> be my number one. Because instead, I put Romero and then Zombie 2, and then everything else comes below that. I know that Train to Busan belongs above Zombie 2, but I've seen Zombie 2 a billion times. Uh. 
But no, it's so fun because we've had so many mixing in varying positions in our our top ten. This is um, great. Oh, it's it's fantastic. And there's so many just homemade zombie movies and then spin-offs and loving remakes. And I'm just excited to see where the whole genre as a whole ends up because we have like The Walking Dead. We're still getting Walking Dead TV series. And I think it's time we get another kind of zombie franchise. And I don't know where they could go with it. Uh, y- you know what? Uh, Wait. The Nation was the last one I could think of. Uh, And I know there's probably a lot of people who thought that was too damn silly, but I always watched that above Walking Dead because it was so damn silly. Uh, (laughs) I don't know if you ever saw Z Nation. I watched a little bit, yeah. I absolutely love that show. I don't care how silly it was. I people may look at me and say oh kevin likes all those depressing zombie films dude i love comedy zombie films when they're done right and i can laugh my ass off z nation is not the greatest show out there it's just one of the funniest fucking shows out there i could not stop laughing at it uh i i I would love to see someone else come up with a zombie show that uh that takes that type of perspective over that of what they did with walking dead because walking dead is like cornered the market on depressing zombie stories with depressing people going through a depressing apocalypse yeah i mean we got a little bit with lisa frankenstein this year but i still more say that's more of a frankenstein's monster than a zombie film um (laughs) but yeah i mean there's there's not a whole lot going on other than the walking dead lately and maybe marvel zombies occasionally like they put in um their one spinoff show that they did but yeah there's there's not a lot going on, and it makes me kind of sad. Uh, yeah, I think zombies have fallen out of favor in terms of uh, theatrical releases because of the fact that Walking Dead has cornered the television market. They had the Twilight effect. It ruined vampire movies for everybody, and now Walking Dead has ruined zombies. <laughs> That's okay. There's plenty of vampire <laughs> shows that I watch now. And they're all comedy ones as well. How can I not mention what we do in the shadows? Oh I... my gosh, I love that show so much. And it does have zombies too, which is also <laughs> very fitting. It does have zombies in it, that's right. It has a little bit of everything in it, which makes it that much more fantastic. <laughs> oh my God. So everyone out there, I hope you've enjoyed listening to our top 10 favorite zombie films of all time. Me and uh, Panazzo here. Uh, we hope that you are enjoying what we are providing for you for our Zombie Appreciation Month. Uh, please check out some of our other episodes this month. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our page on YouTube and all fine podcast providers out there, especially Spotify. So without that, uh, we're going to get going because we have more zombie movies to watch uh, and catch up on. Um, While the rest of you, I hope, will do the same. Uh, So like I said, have a great day, and we will check you out on our next podcast episode of Conversations in Horror. Thank you so much. Good day. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures production.